thisiscouch.com, streaming wellness into your lives. You're listening to A Quirky Journey, the healthy family podcast with your hosts, Joe Witten and Fuad Kassab. Hi everyone, it's Joe here. So um, I hope you're all having good school holidays. Well, it's school holidays here, so uh, in Queensland. I suppose some states are different, um, but it'll be school holidays soon for you guys too. I'm actually right now laying in a hammock <laughs> on the back veranda, um, looking at the trees swaying in the breeze and just having a bit of a rest time. I'm still a bit tired from my time away. Um, sleeping in a tent with lots of mosquitoes and torrential rain. Totally worth it though. So yeah, I'm, I'm just having a bit of a rest day today. Um, but I wanted to get this podcast up. So this podcast is with my good friend, Helen Marshall of Primal Alternative. And, um, we always have a really good chat, Helen, Helen and I, when we start chatting. And we weren't really sure what this podcast was going to be about, but we knew it would be awesome. <laughs> um, and it was. So we ended up really talking about, um, you know, women especially who maybe haven't worked for a while, maybe because they've got little kids and they've been at home with the children and the busyness of being a mum and, and then they've, the kids have gotten old enough that they want to do some work again outside of the home or, or maybe from home. Um, but their previous career just doesn't really suit them anymore and they're a bit changed and they've grown and they've moved on and they're ready for something new and they want something that has purpose and meaning and something that um, brings connection with people that are like-minded, something that's worthwhile. Um, or maybe they're just feeling a bit lost because it's been a few years since they worked so they really, really don't know what to do. Um, and also women who maybe have been on a bit of a health journey and you know, their ideas have changed, who they are has changed, and they're looking at getting back into the workforce but not sure where and what to do. And Helen and I both share a bit of our stories um, because that's what happened to us. And then we talk about the business that Helen started, Primal Alternative, and how that worked for her and how it's helped other women as well and empowered them to have their own businesses, work from home around their families, and um, to be able to balance that family work balance, which can be so tricky for us. Um, and it's just a really, I hope that you'll find it really empowering and encouraging, um, this podcast, because it's, um, I think it's something that a lot of women go through, that feeling of being a bit lost and not knowing um, what to do with work and struggling to find something that really suits them. So hopefully this will be an encouragement to you to look for the, um, the job that is the right fit for you and that will really be something you can put your whole heart into. So enjoy the podcast and I will chat to you guys soon. Welcome, Helen, my good friend, Helen. It's so nice to have you on the show. <laughs> oh, thanks for having me back again, Joe. It's so cool to hang out with you. Yeah, we were having a bit of a chat before we started recording and, um, you know, we were talking about how women, you know, we get, we get sometimes caught up in our everyday life with the kids and the family and everything and it's quite scary to think of um, stepping out on your own into um, starting your own business or even, you know, if you've been at home with the kids for 10 years, like I was, even just going and finding some work is, is a scary thing. Um, so I'd mm. love for you to tell your story about, I know we have interviewed you before, but it's been a while and there'll be new people listening. And I'd love just, if you could start off with your story of how in the world you started this amazing business, Primal Alternative, and, you know, what was, what, what led you down that path? I'd love to know the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you the story. I'll try and take it from a different angle this time in case people are like, okay. well, not her again. <laughs> <laughs> We heard her story. Um, but my background in terms of jobs uh, or career is, first of all, I was um, in the health and fitness industry from the age of 14. Oh. Um, so I 
Aerobics. 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 That show my age. In How, the 80s. What were you doing at 14? <laughs> I'm impressed. Well, well, I was doing this thing uh, in England called the Duke of Edinburgh's Award Scheme. And yeah. um, it was like, it's kind of like a, you know, to, to bring you up as a wholesome, all round kind of kid, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and one of the uh, things you had to do was sport, right? And I'm really, <laughs> really bad at sport. <laughs> but you could, do, you could do aerobics as, okay. as your thing to kind of tick off that section. So, anyway. Went to aerobics when I was 14 and just loved it. I just loved the music, loved the workout, everything. I loved aerobics too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd go to it now if it was still on. Like, it's yeah. so good. Um, we should start a new one and call it retrobics. And yeah, I oh, mean, that would be so popular, especially if people are wearing 80s gear, right? Ew. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we could have all the, like, you know, all the old rock music. We could, uh. yeah. <laughs> Anyway, and um, I got so into it. I get quite passionate about things that I used to go to, like all the classes. So um, when Mandy, who was the instructor, went on holiday, she said, oh, look, here's my tips. Uh, would you mind covering uh, for my classes while, while I go on holiday? And back in the day where you didn't need insurance yeah, or yeah, qualifications. You know? So anyway, so that started um, my passion really with uh, health and wellness. And obviously back then, um, well, even now, it's the conventional wisdom around um, a low-fat, high-carbohydrate diet and to exercise, you know, um, do cardiovascular exercise for at least 60 minutes a day. Wow. So, yeah. So I was doing up to 10 classes a week um, and, yeah, and eating, you know, pretty much, you know, kind of very bland food in the sense of, um, you know, salad without any dressing on it and yeah. – Chicken breast, you know, grilled. Yeah, I can just remember dry. how dry. <laughs> dry that was. Where's the sauce? And, um, <laughs> yeah, no, where's the sauce? Where's the sauce? Where's um, the sauce? So I lived that way for 25 years, and I think you can get away with a lot in your 20s, you know, mm-hmm. and 30. And then when you move on to have kids, um, you kind of put your system under a little bit more pressure to produce a human and nurture that human through those sleepless nights and all that breastfeeding and oh, all the other stuff that comes along, uh, comes along with it. And um, I moved out of the fitness industry because the hours were really in the leisure industry. Anyone knows, you know, like gyms open at five o'clock in the morning and then you might have a class at seven o'clock at night and it just didn't really, yeah. was really at, like kind of antisocial. So I got into a corporate job, which was nice, you know, eight till six hours um, and I worked in recruitment. So I was actually, uh, whereas in the gym, I'd been speaking to women about their health goals and what they wanted to achieve, which pretty much was lose weight and turn up. That was it. There yeah. was never, never any link between um, food and mood or mm. chronic illness yeah. and you know lifestyle. There was just, there was nothing. It was all about calories in, calories out and to be as tiny as possible, yeah. no matter whether you were happy inside or whether you were sleeping or going to the toilet, none of that mattered. It was just a real How do you look? basic, <laughs> yeah, basic, basic, very shallow equation. Yeah. And then when I was a recruiter, I was um, talking to women because I recruited accounting support staff, which are predominantly women. And they'd be looking to, you know, get a job that could fit around the family that was fulfilling giving them something that was outside of just domestic bile, you know, that, um, that could fulfill them. So, so anyway, I had to leave the corporate um, job, um, one, because I hated it. I was really good at it, but it was really stressful. And it was just, yeah, my adrenals really started to tax, you know, hours. into my, yeah, long hours and a lot of pressure um, and not a lot of, um you know, uh, balance around lifestyle. So it was really frowned upon to take a lunch break. Oh. Whereas I used, I used <laughs> to sneak out of the office and go to the gym. And I'm so glad I did because, you know, like just those deep breaths at the gym and that clarity that you get from being away from your desk, you have the best ideas. Yeah. You know, I'm away from the desk. Um, obviously that lifestyle does not fit in with yeah. being a mama at all. So I left my really good paying corporate job um, to, I don't know, I, I don't know when I look back how we managed to make ends meet. Um, but you do. Yep. And mm-hmm. it was really the best, absolutely the best thing ever. But, you know, I really found like, I then had this like career crisis around 
um, what can I do that fits around the kids that can still help me contribute to the yeah. family income? You know, it was a really, really tricky time. Anyway, um, I then went on to have Millie, our second child, and around the age of around 38, I had a health crisis, which was kind of a culmination of everything I've just told you. Yeah. Um, and it was a slow build. Like when I look back, I can see um, as a teenager, I had really bad acne. I was on um, oxytetracycline. I know the name of it because I had that many repeat prescriptions oh, of it. Yeah. But it's basically an antibacterial antibiotic so um, to, to get rid of the skin bacteria. But obviously, we now know, was completely nuking my gut flora as well. And I was on that probably for four or five years. It's one of those, when I said that to my doctor, she was like, oh, you really only, when I said to my doctor now, she said, oh, you really only supposed to have like a two week course of that. You're not really meant to be on it. As a, yeah. (laughs) Well, I don't know. Like, I guess that it was just, you know, I had, you know, it it wasn't hugely bad acne, but it was more of a cosmetic thing. I was starting to get some scarring on my face and looking back now, you know, I must have had some gut issues at that age um, oh, yeah. that could have been addressed, but didn't know. You don't know what, what no. you don't know. <clears throat> and then um, carrying on, you know, I thought that we ate healthy. We'd buy organic vegetables and, mm-hmm. you, know, you know, but we'd just not eat any fat. And, um, yeah. you know, there was quite a lot of sugar. There was lots of Tim Tams and Magnums <laughs> and that kind of that kind of, <laughs> yeah, that kind of thing. So my health crisis basically was just, a just, uh, awful, horrible um, place to be. Um, I just felt sick all the time. Um, so it was like morning sickness and feeling hungover, but just never went away. And there's nothing you could do to get rid of that that horrible feeling. So going anywhere just wasn't an option because it's like, oh, I don't know how I'm going to feel. And wow. you just wanted to sort of, um, yeah, not see anyone. And um I had really bad insomnia, so I'd be exhausted all day and then I'd get into bed and I'd just be like, um, kind of like just singing through like at one of the kids' TV shows on repeat in my head. It was like, like torture, you know, yeah. you're like, come on, I've got to sleep. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, the kids are going to wake up soon. Hurry up, go to sleep. Hurry up, go to sleep. You know that yeah. feeling? Mm-hmm. Oh my God, it's so awful. Yeah. Um, and I just felt completely overwhelmed, as you can imagine, because I felt like crap I wasn't sleeping oh I wasn't pooing either Joe I was having like probably a, 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 a poo the size of a pen about two or three times a week oh, so it's like this full of toxins then <laughs> toxic yeah absolutely reabsorbing all the crap literally mm-hmm. and so you know just the thought of what am I going to cook for dinner tonight and oh my god look at the laundry basket <laughs> it was just it was so overwhelming, Joe. I mean, it sounds pathetic, but it no, really was. I've I was just like, we all, I think most of us have been there at times. <laughs> in oh, some we, way have, or right? we have. Mm. And, if, and if anyone's listening to this and going, oh my God, that's how I feel, then you're not on your own. You know, like yeah. it's okay. <laughs> and you can do something about it and it does yes. get better. Like that's, yes, that's it really does get better. <laughs> it does get better because I just thought I was, you know, some kind of. Um, weirdo and you know there's there's a lot of um programming when we're brought up around just pull your socks up just get on with it yeah you know stop whinging whinging palm you know there's lots of things around um things yeah. you just think oh just i just need to get on with this mm-hmm. um and I'd, re- I'd be hanging out washing i remember it so vividly because there's lots of washing and um and, and my brain would just go down this like negative, like I couldn't, I knew it wasn't me thinking it, but it, you know, it wasn't me. I'm bubbly, confident, like a lot of fun, you know? And, yeah. but my brain would go down this thing of like, we've got no money. The kids are going to be really sick. It's, you know, awful. I'm never going to get better. Like it just, and I'd try and like, you know, I've always been into meditation and yoga and positive affirmations, but I couldn't slap any positive affirmation on this. Like it was just like, yeah. You know, kind of like the negative thinking was just on this roller coaster of its own. And it was, it felt, I felt so helpless. It was awful. And my poor husband was just like beside himself. He was like, I just want you to be better. Like, just get better. What you, what's, where's my girl gone? You know? And um, one night I was um, on the couch, you know, obsessing about how bad the world was and telling him about it. And he was like, what are you thinking all these things for? I was like, I don't know. Make it stop. And um, he said, I think you need to get some 
you need, I think you need to get some help. And, and um, so I went to see the doctor and she basically did ran so many tests and um, long story short, just said, there's nothing wrong with you. You might have a bit of irritable bowel syndrome, but there's no drug for that. So oh, wow. you're on your own kind of thing. And I think you need to go and see a psychologist. So I went to see the psychologist and um, she basically said, look, you just sound like you just need a break. Why don't you put your kids in daycare and, and do some stuff for yourself? And I was like, oh, I couldn't possibly do that. Are you crazy? I can't just put the kids in daycare and have a rest. <laughs> so just, it was, you know, like this self-love, self-care piece wasn't learnt at that point. <laughs> I was like, didn't realise how important that is. Um, and I must kind of like, you know, soldier on. So um, anyway, on the same conversation, when I was talking to my husband on the couch, I said to him, um, you know, I said, I think I need to go and see a naturopath, but we were broke, right? And naturopaths are really expensive when you're really broke. And I said, anyway, I think she's just going to tell me to go gluten free because that's what <laughs> naturopaths say, right? So, yeah, um, like the first thing they yeah, say, go gluten free. It's a good start. It's it a is. good start. So yeah. I did my own N equals one gluten free experiment. And oh my goodness, Joe. Yeah. Like I went, I felt worse, like worse <laughs> for about five days. I was like, oh my goodness, maybe I just need to go back to bread because this is worse than it ever was before. But I didn't realize that what I was having was this huge detox. My mm. body was literally going, oh, thank God she stopped eating gluten. <laughs> now we can get rid of all of this stuff that we're holding on to. And literally within five days, I kind of like popped out of this other side and went, yeah. oh my God, oh my God, like the colors are brighter and the food tastes good and everything just, I don't know. I was like, I'm never going to go back to eating gluten again. I don't care. You know, I don't need to know if I've got celiac disease or not because yeah. I just know I'm never going to eat gluten again. I don't even want to eat the bread to have the test. You know, it's just yeah. like, no way. Yeah. I'm not going back there. So um, once you start on the gluten-free rabbit hole, you soon find out you know, about whole foods and paleo and um, all the other things you can uh, cut out and have experiments with as well and it wasn't long before um somebody mentioned quirky cooking oh. <laughs> to me which was just a godsend joe because wow. um you just don't know what to make when you're first starting out i mean oh, now it's you just feel so overwhelmed you do and and just trying to get things that weren't weird food you know just mm -hmm. stuff that the kids would eat um yeah. and yeah we all love like your oh, love your your book is out all the time and we literally <laughs> cook something for every day like um yesterday we did um i did your mango smoothies like the kids Aww. just love those we have those all the time and your peanut butter fudge i got the laptop out i was like oh i need some fudge <laughs> <laughs> so, always you cooking recipe happening in this house thank you for all your recipes because you just make this whole journey so much easier um so yes, yeah, so I was just starting to feel a lot, lot, lot better and started to just get this feeling of, you know, what else is possible and oh my goodness, you know, there must be more people out there feeling like I'm feeling. Yeah. So, um, so I qualified as a primal health coach so that I could, um, you know, help just one person feel better. Like, you know, just, here you go. Just, you can feel better just by changing what you put on the end of your fork. Like that's how easy it can be for some people. Yeah. Um, you know, just getting more sleep, spending more time in nature, mm -hmm. chewing your food, slowing life down, all of these things that are sort of second nature now, but at that time were real game changers, you know, in yeah. the, in the wellness journey for me. You actually focus and on I, them and, and work on them. They actually make yeah. a difference. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Absolutely. But my client said to me, and I got a really good following of clients straight away because, you know, this is a really common thing that people are feeling that they could feel a bit, they're, they're suspicious that I think I could feel a bit better than this. Like, I don't think this is the norm, yeah. <laughs> you know, like surely this isn't just being 40 and having two kids, you know, they're like, yes. yeah. I'm pretty sure that I shouldn't feel this anxious. I should be going to the toilet more often, etc." cetera. Mm -hmm. Um, and, but they said to me, look, Helen, you know, it's all right for you. You like spending all that time in your kitchen, but, you know, I'm a teacher or I've got a full-time job and I just don't have the time to make all of that food because there is a lot of food prep, right? You know, especially if you're doing broths and slow-cooked stews mm -hmm. and, you know, you're activating your nuts and you've got to go to the farmer's yeah. market to get the spray-free local stuff, you know, like it can be really overwhelming and, and mm -hmm. all like, all consuming to start yeah. with until you get some good hacks going. So I said, 
um, how about if I make some food for you? And um, the fit, there's literally like three people went, yeah, I'd buy something from you. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so, uh, I, so I created a, a food range. And to be honest, Joe, like I wanted to do all the things. I was like chili con carne, uh, yeah. tissue milk, kombucha, uh, cookies, bread, pizza bases, like everything. Um, until I realized that you can only bake low, bit, low risk products from yeah. home in your kitchen. So I had to streamline it, but actually it was really good because that meant that Primal Alternative as a business could focus on, you know, streamlined, similar um, recipes and just be really known for doing that and not trying to be all the things to all the people. Yeah. And that's, that's a very long way of saying how Primal Alternative started. No, that's so good. I love that. I haven't heard all of your story before really. So it's, you know, it just brings so many things back to my memory of, of my journey. And I won't go into all that because people have heard that before. But isn't it amazing how, you know, you go, th- a lot of us go through that really low time where we feel quite lost with partly our health, um, which is probably a big part of it, but also the direction we're going with, you know, finding purpose and finding fulfillment in our, in our work and um, wanting to, be there for our family, but at the same time we get that need to do something for ourselves and do something for the wider world around us and connect with people and, you know, have that fulfilling career and family balance. Mm -hmm. I think most women I talk to want that but don't know how to get there and they're struggling with jobs that they don't like or or they're just not even, you know, they've just been at home with the kids because... They haven't been able to find something that fits in. So I really mm. love what you do and the way that you offer women this opportunity to to balance the two. And I just have to ask you, how do you feel, how well do you feel you do that? Like I know it's difficult working, especially when you when you begin your own business because that's a whole other ballgame because you're in charge of this, I guess, do you call it a franchise? I'm not really sure what you call it. Yeah, it's a franchise, yeah, yes. or, or, you, uh, or the primal alternative empire, Joe. Empire, okay, you're the queen of the <laughs> empire. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, but, you know, it can be like you, you can work um, in a balanced way, but then when you're in charge of the whole thing, it can get difficult. So tell me some things that you do that really help you define that balance. How, have you had to struggle with that have you learned some things over the last couple of years since you started primary yes I sure have yeah I really have and just to um just to fill in the gap of people are going mm. Mm, what, what what are we talking about there um I didn't <laughs> explain I will uh, explain uh, sorry I missed it too but go ahead yes yeah, but I, I missed a big chunk of uh, the primal alternative story, which yeah. was, you know, I, I when I was down here in Albany, WA, that's where I'm from, and I'm from the northeast of England, in case you're wondering, because everyone's like, where is she from? <laughs> um, <laughs> and with that weird accent. And no, um, oh, thank you for giving me permission to have this weird accent. I um, like it. But <laughs> I know, I'm getting used to it myself now. Um, <laughs> People come up to me, people are coming up to me at the wellness summit and saying, I recognize that voice. And I was like, it's good. This is, um, yeah, it's, a, it's a unique. Stand out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a bit different. Um, so, so I was making the primal alternative products for um, people you know, down here at my local farmer's market, health food shops, cafes, uh, gourmet pizza places, that kind of thing. When did you and start the feedback- that? How long ago? Four years ago. Okay. It was four years ago. Almost, almost four years ago to the day that I did my first market which is really oh, that's exciting really cool and I love Facebook memories for that they've been yeah, like, oh, how, far, how far we've come it's amazing yeah. you know um yeah so so the feedback I got was people were just like you know putting their hand on my arm and saying oh my goodness thank god you know like thank goodness yeah. for this because this is something I would normally make but you know I just don't have the time to do it or it's so nice to just be able to grab a piece you know a loaf of um you know, homemade, whole food bread, grain free from, from the shops when I'm grabbing all my other bits and bobs mm. and it's just that convenience but without the compromise. Yes. And they liked that it was local and they liked that they were supporting me and it was just this really good, warm community mm-hmm. feeling. 
And um, so I was like, I've just got to, um, I didn't actually uh, think this at all. One day, to be honest, I was just sat, <laughs> I was just sat. <laughs> it wasn't my idea. Just I was happen, just, right? they, they do, right? When you start to really, I really believe, Joe, that when you get rid of all that pain and distortion and brain fog and, yeah. you know, it, you know, just that whole tired fatigue feeling and you start to have that desire to, you know, like I was afraid of flying for 10 years, which was oh, really? part of my, hmm, part of my gut story as well, which I didn't put two and two together until I started to feel better and started to think, I want to go places. I want to get on a plane. I want to travel again. I was like, Oh my God, this is so exciting. Ooh. And when you start to just feel that again, all sorts of magical things happen. Mm. And one day I was just sat at the table, just doing nothing and you know you have those like nanoseconds where there's like that gap between a thought <laughs> and the next thought and yeah the idea just dro- literally dropped into my head it was like you need to franchise your um baking business so that other women around the country can um have a business doing what they love from home and contributing which is what you were really talking about yeah before joe you know like mm-hmm. we want to contribute to our family but there's this desire Yes. To contribute to humanity, essentially, you know, the exactly. community around us, but we want to make it easier for other people, especially if we found a way to ease suffering and, and enhance healing within ourselves. There's this desire to share it. It's oh, just, it's, all, it's like this inbuilt human thing, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so I was like, oh my goodness. And I just really felt that if I hadn't done it, somebody else would. It was just one yeah. of those ideas that needed to manifest in the world. So I, you know, bravely kind of just stumbled through in the dark and, um, you know, and, and did the things that I had to do to make it happen. And I was never, never sure of what was coming up, you know, in steps four, five, and six, although I could see, you know, one, two, and three. And I have to tell you, like, there was so, I I faced so many upper limits and beliefs around what I was capable of because, Mm -hmm. You know, like I'm a, just a woman from the northeast of England. You know, like you know that that in, that in itself, you have a lot of um, old programming around yeah. what you think you're capable of and what you deserve and what you're worthy oh, don't for. Worry, and know. also, I'm just a woman yeah. from a, a tiny little country town in far north Queensland. I can't do anything. <laughs> yes, it's, it's what we all do. We all limit ourselves, don't we? Well, it's reassuring to, to know that you think that too because, oh, yeah. like, I would never have thought that you would oh, think that. Goodness. Isn't it crazy? <laughs> of course. <laughs> <sighs> We're so crazy. And, you know, when, um, when, my, when I went to see my grandma when I first got into uni, I was so proud. I was the first woman ever in our family to get into uni. Oh. And I went to see her to tell her the big news. I was like, you know, kind of girl power grandma. And um, she was, and, you know, she's got pictures of my cousins, you know, in their cap and gown yeah. framed on top of the TV, you know, like they're like the boys, they did yeah, it. Yeah. And, um, and I said, Oh, look, grandma, so excited. I've got into uni. She was like, well, pet, I don't know why you bother. Like, why don't you just want to stay home and have bands, which is oh. like, a, <laughs> like a word for kids, yeah, you know? Yeah. And I was just like, really? And can I do both? And it's almost like we don't have that permission really mm-hmm. Or it hasn't really worked in the bricks and mortar world yeah. of the nine to five. You have to leave the family home and, yeah. you know, as if, be the... As if it's one or the other. Yeah. yeah. And, if you, and if you do go to work, like, you know, some of my bosses came back to the corporate world. They had their babies. Three months they came back in, the kid was in full-time daycare and they get frowned upon for that. Yeah. And then the woman's not quite, you know, up to speed because she's still got baby brain. You know, there's all of these things going on. Mm. But now, now, sisters, we are in this, <laughs> we are in this age where we can work from home. Mm. You know, I'm just sat here in my Pilates gear having a coffee <laughs> in WA talking to Joe in a different time North zone Queensland. <laughs> yeah. in South North Queensland. This is going to be, um, you know, a podcast that's going to be published to hundreds of thousands of people across the world. You know, it's yeah. just this amazing time. Like even 10 years ago, yeah. well, not 10 years ago because you, you were already doing it then, Joe, but if we go back like... <laughs> Barely. <laughs> I, was, I was Googling how to do it. <laughs> but I it's all so <laughs> How do I, yeah, no, I did that too. How do, now I've written it. How do I publish it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's lots of learning, but it is such a really 
I actually think it's the best time to be a woman because um, all of the you know beliefs are changing around what women deserve and what they can achieve. And it's about coming back to your um, initial question about you know how to create something that is not going to burn you out, right? Because yeah. we're all so terrified of ending back in that hole of how we felt before yeah. that I know like I have big fear around it. And, you know, even if I like bust out some really intense exercise, I'm like, Oh God, what's going to happen? Am I going to just collapse and <laughs> be in bed with adrenal fatigue for two weeks? You know, so, <laughs> but, you know, you, I know you yeah, can relate. Yeah, you know, I did that <laughs> one week. <laughs> I know. I know. Uh, um, so yeah, so for me, it's about creating really, firm boundaries and uh, Denise Duffield Thomas who's an amazing um, Australian mum she's just released a book called Chillpreneur and it's basically all about this so she's got she's a mum check her out she's really cool and it's about how to uh, empower yourself as a woman in business but to do it on your terms and exactly uh, that's what I want and she (laughs) she says and I love this she says boundaries don't make you a bitch right Mm -hmm. and it's true yeah. And it's boundaries around your time. Yeah. It's boundaries around, you know, what you'll say yes to and, you know, um, make it a conscious no and, you know, not feeling guilty about it. That's right. um, and boundaries around what you need to do to maintain your wellness. So like for yeah. me, my, you know, my movement's really important. So that gets scheduled in like yeah. this, I'm going to Pilates at this time and there's no appointments available um, having a coffee with my best friend in real life, not just like a, cause yeah. my whole life is just Zoom calls and Facebook, right? Yeah. <laughs> so meeting her for a coffee and, you know, going to town and just having that couple of hours where we just talk, that's really essential for my, um, Same. mental health. Yeah. Um, and the real food, like that's just a non-negotiable, like there's got to be good nourishing food, there's got to be um, time in nature. So uh, today is an appointments day for me. So I've got appointments all day, but there's mm-hmm. there's time blocked out in my calendar to have lunch in the sunshine yeah. and time to meditate after lunch. Um, and then other days, you know, I've got time to go to the beach and go for a swim. So it's just having all of that factored in. And I also have things like massages that are booked in mm-hmm. every two weeks, oh. you know, until, until the end of time. <laughs> And that sounds like and recently <laughs> and recently, thanks to um, permission from you, Joe, I've started to get a little bit more help around the house yeah. um, and just really identifying that mm-hmm. there are women out there whose zone of genius is cleaning, like they are so good at cleaning, <laughs> yeah. and they love it, and, and they've quite organized and they have a system they're like my sister yeah. <laughs> I'm like yeah no, I'm, I'm okay. I'm like me she's better. <laughs> I can do it, but but I do it, and it kind of like it feels exhausting to me because yeah, right. And I realise that now it's just it's not where what I want to want to will like, not where I want to be spending my time. And I think a lot of us feel are feeling exhausted or drained is a good mm. way to explain it. And it's not necessarily because we are drained; it's because we're um, spending time or giving our energy to things that aren't actually in true alignment with yes what. Uh, our zone of genius is, you know. Yeah. Um, so I've got help with That's, the cooking. I've got help with the cleaning, mm-hmm. and that just frees me up to do a podcast interview with you. I mean, normally yeah. now would be tidying up after breakfast time yeah, and vacuuming, right. mm. but I'm talking to you. That's much yeah. better. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, I think it's you know when you like going back to this idea of feeling a bit lost, not having a, a focused direction or a fulfilling sort of purpose in your work and you feel like sometimes you're frittering like when you're in that stage I remember um, you feel like you're almost wasting your days because you're doing the things that are just needing to be redone every day you're making the bed to do it and that's all good and that's all things that need to be done but you feel like but can't I do something that's going to make a difference longer term can't I mean mm. I need to be careful how I say this because I really believe that it's important to train your children to do these things and to be able to um, uh, learn a work ethic at home and to um, 
you know, to have mum there helping them and training them and, and just really being their mentor. Like as a mother, I think my main job is mentoring my kids. Um, but as they sort of get through that stage where they're starting to do some things on their own and they're starting to be a bit more independent, it's so nice to be able to widen your focus and to be able to do some other things as well. And like you say, start to, um, uh, what's the word, to assign jobs to other people, uh, delegate, that's the word. So, you know, delegate some to your kids, delegate some to people that work for you, and then you can really begin to focus on, um, you know, other things that you love to do and your work and your fulfilling life. <laughs> it's just, yeah. yeah, it's just difficult, I guess, when you first begin to start to have that balance and to start to push out of your comfort zone, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is really difficult. And I think that, you know, um, it's really relevant to the different ages and stages of where different, you're at different you know, seasons in your life. Cause life. yeah. And, and, mm. and when you, you know, when your kids are little, I mean, when my kids were like under 10, mm-hmm. well, under actually under three uh you know my vision was my vision was all about uh was all about getting out of suburbia getting out of the corporate rat race yeah. move into the country get in some space some fresh air having mm. chickens yeah. having a veggie patch lying in the sunshine breastfeeding you know Aww. having cups of tea and cake with other women <laughs> in the community yeah just all of that gorgeous stuff right and that mm. was my dream then that was my vision yeah. and it and it came to be a reality. And then when your kids go to school full time, um, things change. And then you, yeah. you, like you say, they become more independent. They, you've trained them how to change the sheets and make their yeah. lunchbox, and yeah. so they do it. And you've got more time available, and you've had, you know, you've experienced some healing yourself. So you've got this sudden drive. And not everybody's got massive, big change the world ideas, yeah. you know. But everybody's got some kind of uh, passion or vision that they want to get out and share with the world, whatever it is, you know, even, you know, not that anything's better or anything's lesser, but mm. it's like the cleaning lady, like she's created this amazing cleaning company mm. that's really good for school mums who want to earn some money during school hours mm. and they're really good at it. And that business is amazing and it's really contributing to those you know, school mums in the community's mm. family, like incredible, like amazing. What a great contribution, you know? So I guess um, the thing to do is just to really acknowledge that, you know, anything, and this comes back to being completely primal, right? Which mm-hmm. is obviously what I really like, but you know, yeah. like, and anything, anything at all that is a step outside or is anything new is going to, create that feeling of fear inside of you and that's completely normal and I actually now when I feel that feeling of fear I think oh good yeah me too (laughs) (laughs) I was explaining that to my daughter she's 21 and she's still in this really timid sort of stage of life I don't know what I want to do I don't I'm not good at anything I don't I don't know which direction to go and I'm like you know, you've got to start stepping out of that comfort zone and push the boundaries a bit. I said, you know, now, like I used to be the shyest kid at school. I didn't, like you, you wouldn't have if you said boo to me, I'd jump and cry probably. You know, it was shocking. My teacher would say, Joanna, that's my real name, by the way, um, Joanna, you need to be quiet in class. And I burst into tears. I was like the shyest kid at school. And um, now I'm just like, um, someone offers me to come and cook at an Indigenous retreat in Darwin and live in tents for a week. And I go, yeah. And then someone else, oh, no. how about you come and cook at our gut retreat at a retreat at a luxury ski lodge in Italy? And I go, yeah. <laughs> I'm saying to my daughter, new experiences are exciting. Sure, you get a bit of fear, but then you go, oh, I can't wait to see how I'm going to be able to solve these problems and issues and scary things and come out the other side and what I'll learn from it. And you just have to yes. start. You just have to jump in and start. And it's, That's and I, it. That's and it, it doesn't matter, you know, what it is, what job it is, um, you'll learn from it. 
whatever it is. So this is what I'm trying to train into my children. Just jump in and do something because you're going to learn from it and you're going to go from there into something else. It's very exciting. It is. I think it's, I think it's, this is like, this is life, you know, like yeah. this is the, you feel like you're, you're a player in the world. Like, and That's right. th- you, people talk about, they talk about the comfort zone and mm. I actually think the comfort zone is not very comfortable. No, it's, you know, it's the place where you're like worrying about what could go wrong and regretting mm. what happened in the past. It's where you just stay. And I don't think, you know, like stagnate just, sometimes. Yeah. If, if you just look like at nature, like I always think every time I go to the beach, like it changes all the time. It's like there's impermanence. That's the, you know, if there's one thing mm. that you guarantee yeah. is going to happen, it's change. And I yeah. think that if we try and stay safe, we just end up going backwards and it, it's yeah. like this, you know, but when you, when you, when you act, um, appreciate that back in the primal times, which is how our brain's still wired, mm-hmm. like stepping out, and doing something that might upset the tribe or, you know, might be, you might be a bit more outspoken than somebody else. It could be back in the day, literally life threatening, mm. you know, that that's, that's, and that's where we go. And once we realize you, you can go, oh, thanks doubts and fears for keeping me safe. <laughs> but actually I'm probably not going to die if I walk on stage, you know, like I was just thinking <laughs> of you when you're giving all your examples, like come and talk on stage in front of 800 people. That's right. Okay. Where's my microphone? (laughs) Here I am. You know, like you're probably not going to die, but the feeling that you get when you're standing backstage before you Mm -hmm. walk on, you really feel like you might die, (laughs) (laughs) but but you don't. And you do, you push through and, you know, change and growth Mm. only come from doing new things and it's right. the change of growth that brings that buzz that that feeling of aliveness and yeah you know when you when you're out on the other side coming back on such a high like oh yeah. my god I can't believe I did that <laughs> you know it's and that's what you know I guess what what I'm trying to say is you know it's that old adage of feel the fear and do it anyway oh, and yeah. just make those if you're feeling that resistance or overwhelm I find the biggest antidote to that is action. So just to take even just like the tiniest little steps. So if you're thinking, oh my goodness, I so admire Joe. I've got some great recipes I want to share. Then why don't you just start writing down your recipes or start a Facebook page? Yeah. Yeah. Just start, just do something. Cause there's so many people. I don't know if you, and don't be thinking, well, no one would want what I have to share because there is always someone out there that needs what you have to share always it is and when and the stuff that you think oh everybody knows that right they that's your zone know. of genius mm. they don't know that they, they don't, don't know that and you think well i don't want to say that because you obviously know this. they're like no we didn't know that you're like yeah, right. <laughs> okay I mean, that's what i need to share that that yeah. stuff that's so obvious to you is mm. what the world wants to hear like and it's just so exciting there's so much potential and i hear i don't know about you if you hear this joe but i hear a lot of people say oh you know i could do a recipe book or Mm -hmm. i could you know create a food range or i've got this that i want to do or this dream anything from you know anything to do with like family or moving house or improvements to their health and i just think what's what's stopping you what what is that Mm. that you know that limiting belief that old program that's running you know maybe from something someone said to you when you were six you know it doesn't necessarily need to run the rest of your life (laughs) yeah um going back to the thing that we mentioned before about seasons of life I just want to mention here like if you're in that that time where you you basically are sort of cocooned with tiny children in in your home and it's it's really overwhelming to think of doing anything extra. Don't, don't stress about it. You can, what I did during that time was just read and read and read and read and read. And I think that set the foundation for where I am now. Like I was still there with my children, but I was learning. And then when I was ready, I stepped out of my home to do a bit more in the public. But before that, that's like your like a butterfly in a cocoon you know you're learning you're growing and then you eventually step out so don't feel jealous of people that have stepped out and think why can't I do that you know why am I stuck here with kids all the time well this treat it as your learning time and and you'll eventually get there yeah 
Absolutely. That's really great advice. And podcasts as well are a really, (laughs) podcasts is quicker. Like I used to find reading better. Yeah. (laughs) It was almost too too quick. You didn't took too long, you know, and and, and I love books, but sometimes I'd rather just listen to the podcast of the interview with the author. The old me. Yeah. I can cook while I listen to podcasts. It's awesome. (laughs) It is good. And when you like, we, we live in the country, so all of the car journeys, like half an hour, 40 minutes. Mm. And that's, I'm like, bring it on. I never, people say, oh, you must get sick of driving out there. Do you like, no, actually I love it. It's like, um, I've heard someone call it the, um, car university or something, everything, you know, everything, but you can really, you can really manage the the things that you uh, are exposed to. And yeah, even when you are in that beautiful cocoon, um, part of your young children but you've still got this desire you know actually my brain would like something a little bit more than just sending nappies and and doing the washing you can have these you know you can have just a a social media stream full of inspirational you know people and you can really monitor like what what you're watching on tv like I just really found I got really sensitive to some of the shows on tv once I had a kid I was like oh I just this doesn't I don't want to watch this anymore and you know, being influenced yeah. by a lot of that. Yeah. Mm. So just trying to keep it, you know, um, high vibing, I guess, you know, keeping yeah. really inspirational um, people around you during that mm-hmm. time where you, and you can learn so much. And it's just such a great, um, like you say, a cocoon or a breeding ground for new ideas when you're in that that zone. Yeah, really cool yeah, opportunity. Mm. So now... Um, Tell us about what you're doing now and how it's all going for you. Tell us where you're at with your life work. Yes, my life, my divine assignment. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, it's going really good, Joe. Like, oh, like, how amazing, like amazing. Um, Sam is going to be 12 mm-hmm. in a couple of months and um, Millie's just turned nine. Yeah. So they're... They're really at that useful age, you know, yeah, like they're really, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they can do dishes. They, yes. <laughs> they can do, they can do all the things. Yeah. Sam's into making pavlovas, so oh, he can even do so. Um... <laughs> it is. Yeah. Especially when it's harmony day at school and um, he tells you at 10 to seven at night that we need to make something like you can make it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is wonderful. Um, but look, it's going really good to be honest. Um, when I launched the franchise, uh, I had quite sort of, I don't know, like it felt like the right thing to do, but I had no idea how it would go. And I've just been literally overwhelmed with how much this idea resonates with other women that, you know, pretty much everybody that's joined Primal Alternative as a producer, or I call them Primalistas, right, which is <laughs> I like that. much nicer, much nicer than a franchisee. Like it's, yeah. all, it's a bit of a, a boring word. Um, yeah. So we call them Primalista and um, yeah, like, so, so all of the, the women that have joined, they've had a similar health story to me. Like we've all got our story of why we're listening to a quirky journey in the first place. You know, we're all seeking new inspiration and new tips and, you know, to, to find that community that gets us, that's on this same journey with us. And really this just provides a really awesome vehicle for women to help other people in their community without having to reinvent the wheel is, yeah. is the term I keep, they keep telling me at the moment. It's like, I've done all of the, you know, nutting this business model out, worked out the costings, done the labels, worked out the recipes, found out what sells, worked out what doesn't, um, found us nice, beautiful, biodegradable cellophane packaging, all the things, you know, like <laughs> the website, the online shop, um, the collaboration with quirky cooking because obviously well not obviously you might not know but we produce the quirky cooking grain-free pastry which is just which is so good like yes and we're about to oh we are we might have launched not sure when this is going to air but we're (laughs) now producing the quirky cooking macadamia and current shortbread which is just like when, it, when everyone anyone makes that they're just like oh my goodness it's it just war- it should have a warning on the packet warning you will not be able to stop eating this every time you walk past the fridge <laughs> it's true 
<laughs> it's true. And and then you won't be able to stop thinking about it. And when you've finished a batch, you'll just want to make a I just batch. need to have a cup of tea and a biscuit. Yeah. <laughs> because I don't want the tea. I just want the biscuit. <laughs> but if I make the tea, it makes it okay. <laughs> Sorry, I know you get excited. You get excited. Um, so I launched the boxing. I uh, launched the boxing day. I launched the baking franchise on Boxing Day 2016. Okay. And to date, like as of today, 79 women have joined me. And one of those women is in America, which That's is just so mind blowing. Cool. So cool because I'm a primal health coach, Mark Sisson. If anybody yeah. um, follows Mark Sisson, he's fantastic. Mm. He features me as a primal health coach success story in, oh, in his webinars. So cool, so good. And um, I didn't even know I was in the webinar, but yes, yeah, like saying <laughs> this is another thing you can do. You don't have to just do one-on-one coaching. You can yeah. run online health because I run online health coaching programs as well in okay. um, my membership program Wellness Sisters. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, create a food range as well and, and, a, and a franchise. So <laughs> that's really cool. So Rashonda, who's my U.S. primal Easter, is how she says it. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> I just love it. I just love it. <laughs> say again, say again. Um, <laughs> um, so she's a primal health coach and she actually um, is a franchisor as well. So she had a, a popcorn business oh. in the States. And it was really successful and people bought into it and um, opened their own branches of it. And then when she went primal, she was like, well, I don't eat grain anymore. So I've got to look for another, <laughs> <laughs> another, opp- another opportunity. So, um, yeah, yeah. so well, it's yeah. so exciting. But yeah, I like my accents. I'm warming yeah. up now. I was a bit, it was a bit early when we started before Joe, but I'm warming up now. Get, <laughs> the coffee's <yeah>. kicked in. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I was surprised I didn't do an accent of Mike earlier because he's a Kiwi. But anyway, <laughs> and and then this afternoon I'm talking to um, Simon, who might be our first primal Mister Woo. in London. In and London. the reason I'm saying this, I'm so excited. In London, <laughs> that's just like bonkers. I'm totally getting my my um, English friends onto this as soon as you get this going. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. Because there's nothing like this. Like, <laughs> I know. Go and buy Joe's pastry. They well, will love it. Was, because, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. We share. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, you do share. And it's amazing pastry. And everybody needs to have this pastry. It's so good. Oh, so good. Um, and it's so exciting because Simon was, he used to run a cafe in Denmark called Luscious Organic. Mm-hmm. And they were a primal alternative first ever stockist so they were the you know like I remember nervously going with my wares when you say Denmark you you mean Denmark WA I thought yeah sorry Denmark WA not Denmark Scandinavia no sorry I have to have to um, clear that yeah maybe (laughs) (laughs) who knows um but you know like I never I did not go out looking for a UK or US franchise Mm. you know master franchise I really just had my heart set on Australia there's, Australia's massive. There's still yeah. so much to do here. We've got so much room for more primal listers. Yeah. But meanwhile, I just kept working on my health. I kept working on my vision. How do I want my life to be? Mm. What else is possible? And then when you're operating from that place, these things just mm. weirdly happen. You know, it's, it's almost like magical. And it's you're just crazy, like, oh, you're perfect. It? And you, yeah. You, and you, if you think about yourself 10 years ago, you think, I would never have imagined doing this never like never never and I've never sort of sat down and said hmm let's brainstorm business ideas I really would like to be a food industry franchise like (laughs) where did that come from you know like I always say I don't have it I don't even have a recipe book in me like I couldn't come up with a whole recipe book you know like I've only got a few bread recipes that's all I've got which is you know, just another story I'm telling myself and I'm working on that one. But, um, but yeah, who knows what's possible when yeah. you just give it a go anyway. I mean, yeah. what have you got to lose? When you say yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm. And so um, for those of you listening who are thinking, you know, this sounds like something that I could do, can you just explain how it works for a mum at home to, to work like this or a dad? Yeah. Absolutely. Obviously, you oh, can catch yeah. on primal misters as well. 
Primal yeah. misters. Yeah, that's actually a term that Fuad came up with. It's that's really right. good. <laughs> and I'm giving you credit for it, Fu, because it's good. Primal mister, because I was like, what are we going to call primalist though? Like that doesn't work in my accent, you know, so it'll have to be a primal mister. And we're going to, everything I say, it's all about sisterhood, but it's just going to have to change to be business, biz besties, I think. Yeah, there you, um, go. you know, we've got. We've got this community of biz besties who you know, are going <laughs> to celebrate your success and hold you accountable and be there for advice and you know support when you and need that, it. But that's um, what you know. Another thing that I really was desiring when I was still a young mum, I wanted to, to work in a place that I wanted to work in a way that was connecting me with other people, and that's why I started a blog. And so, what you're doing is you've got this beautiful connection in, in your community, both with the people that run the franchises and then reaching out into their communities. I really love how that works. Do you want to, I'll let you explain it. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, so, and this is the joy of, you know, modern technology. Mm-hmm. We don't want to sound too much like my dad, but you know, like we, we all come together in just a Facebook group. So we've got this amazing platform to connect uh, yeah. with, you know, so there's women in Victoria, women in Iowa, um, women in WA can all come together and, you know, in the group they can post pictures of, you know, something they've made or they can say, you know, for example, there was a couple of big events that the Primalistas were involved with at the weekend and they're like mm-hmm. sharing pictures of them with Christine Crono and Kirsty oh, Worth and, cool. you know, just these like, oh, my goodness, I got to meet these people who are my, you know, industry heroes and here yeah. I am serving them with one of my cookies. I mean, it's yeah. pretty pretty exciting but if you're a massive introvert and that terrifies you then that's okay too because really um this is a a home baking business Mm. and the model is designed so you can create a business that serves you so most people um most primalistas and i love this and this is real proof that people are creating a business that serves them because there's no minimum targets there's no like you must produce X amount of loaves of bread to out. keep your franchise. <laughs> yeah, like none of that because that's just awful. Um, mm. But, you know, like so we've got, for example, Prime Minister Terry in Victoria and she's got some markets and she gets a lot of orders through the online shop because quite a lot of people in Victoria like online shopping. But mm-hmm. she won't have any stockists because she's a diving instructor and she goes away on, like she's going away for the whole of May. So, and how wonderful is that? So she yeah, can get she can another Prime Minister to yeah like for real life yeah. yeah and she can get another primalista to come in and cover her markets while she's away diving wherever she's going in may no doubt we'll see the pictures and then there's other women who, there's other women who work full time yeah. and they just bake once a fortnight um and that's their contribution to their to their community but basically this is a super low cost franchise it's not we're not talking like a quarter of a million dollars to get started it's a you know it's it's five and a half grand for a franchise um, yeah. to get the, the operations manual and all the recipes and resources um, that you need. Everything from like a script when you first ring up your first stockist and you're not sure what to say, mm. um, all of the pricing details, all of the um, objection handling. You know, we get the usual objections around mm. price and we don't have space to store it in the fridge and all of that kind of thing. So yeah. you get all of that ready to go um as well as a list of places to get your ingredients from and your all of your packaging and your tins that you'll need so it all stays the same across the world Mm. um yeah and so and and so basically um yeah that's it you just you get all the recipes and resources you get onto your local council and you get your kitchen approved um by your local environmental health officer Get yourself some public and um, product liability insurance, which we can help you with all of that. I've developed a really cool uh, food safety program, which, mm-hmm. to be honest, is a bit overkill for a home baker, but it really, <laughs> it really, you know. yeah, it mm-hmm. just gives you an idea of like, well, if, you, if you're baking your stuff there, you need to call your stuff over here, and this is how you need to transport stuff to the stockists to make sure, you know, everything's, yeah, so all of that's all done and so you basically yeah just come in and um and get started on a business that is doing what you love um you know it's really helping share your passion and contribute to the people around you which is it's so cool i just love i love love it that's so good um do you want to give us some 
uh, tell us some places where people can find you. You haven't talked about your podcast at all. Oh, yeah, thanks for the reminder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I also have a podcast on the Wellness Catch, which is Australia's number one ranked health and wellness podcast station. <laughs> um, <laughs> well done. <laughs> you can do a little disclaimer at the end. Really fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no. How do they talk that? So like, I don't know. Know. Maybe they speed it up. I think it's funny though. I like that. I like that bit at the end. Um, so my podcast is called Primal Alternative Podcast and my show is all about real people with real stories about real food. And you can find an interview on there with Joe Witten and also Fouad Kassab. Mm-hmm. And I asked them really interesting questions like, what did they have for breakfast? <laughs> and what do they think about coffee, wine and chocolate? Um, which everybody wants to know. What does Joe Witten think about this? So it's um it's good it's good but if you want to find out about um if you want to check out our online shop if you want to check out about my um wellness sisters membership program um if you want to find out about becoming a primalista everything is on the one website which is primalalternative.com and the process for becoming a primalista is to first of all obviously check out the website find out how it all works and then apply for an interview with me the founder um and then yeah we really just have a look at you know the viability of the business in your area with regards to stockists in your area and your time and how much money you want to make to make it feel like it's worth your while um yeah and then we take it from there so go and check it out primalalternative.com Awesome. And I just have to say that I highly recommend the breads and the, um, the baking that these guys make. So yummy. So thank you for what you Thanks, do, Karen. Helen. Thanks for getting this started. It's a big help to a lot of people. Thank you. And thank you for really helping to raise um, Primal Alternative by trusting us and collaborating with us because um, it's just, yeah, it just gives – consumers and customers and all of our tribe just so much um more trust in a brand that's been endorsed by quirky mm-hmm. cooking because oh. you know you guys have just got so much respect and really are um pioneers and industry leaders and we're so grateful for oh. everything that you do absolutely you. love you to bits hugs mm. <laughs> you too. Well, that was a really good interview i really enjoyed that so i hope you all did too and if you have any questions for helen they can they can ask what on your facebook page maybe yeah yeah um yeah on the yeah email info at primal alternative.com um mm-hmm. yeah anywhere you like yeah. i'll be there <laughs> yeah, she does, she's very good at answering on facebook that's why i mentioned that because she's very she'll answer you quickly I and love uh, social media. Yeah. Just talking about <laughs> small questions, obviously. The big questions, email. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you'll you'll um, find her there and I will put the links all in the show notes for you guys. And um, I hope that you all have a very fulfilling and connected week and we will see you again on the next podcast. Thanks, Helen. Thank thanks you, Joe. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. This has been a production of thewellnesscouch.com. Check us out on Facebook and join in the conversation on facebook.com forward slash thewellnesscouch. Subscribe to each show on iTunes and check us out on Twitter. The Wellness Couch, streaming wellness into your lives. Whilst the Wellness Couch presenter endeavor to provide accurate and helpful information to their listeners, these podcasts cannot take into account individual circumstances and are not intended to be a substitute for health and medical advice from a qualified health professional. You should always seek the advice of a qualified health professional before acting on any of the information provided by any of the Wellness Couch podcasts.